Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be painting this view of the house, the villa that I'm staying at, uh, called La Paria Alta. So I've been staying here in Andalusia in the south of Spain. And uh, I really like how the light's hitting it, how you can see some of the garden, some of the flowers. So I'm going to start painting this. And remember to please hit that subscribe button if you're new. And let's get into this video. Here I'm painting on a gesso primed panel and I'm starting off by sketching in the composition using thin down raw umber paint. So one thing I've done here is I've just put down some lines dividing the canvas into lengths. One of the most important things when painting buildings is to get the angles correct. Having the angles correct is going to give that building that realistic sense of perspective and not make the building look all contorted. There is different ways to get the perspective. One way is you can, you can put in a horizon line and do sort of a two point perspective, base it all off around this. But as I'm painting quite quickly and just working by eye, I'm just taking the angles by closing one eye and then holding my paintbrush up against the edge of the roof or the edge of whatever part of the building I want to check and I'm just checking the angle this way holding my paintbrush so that it lines up with the building and then keeping my arm out stretched and my hand in the same position I then check this angle on my painting and to see if the angles correlate. This way you can get quite good accurate angles. This will help you create a more realistic looking building. So here I'm just massing in the general value and colour of the trees which are framing the house. So what I've done is I've mixed different individual colour mixes for different trees and different areas of the trees. And what I'm doing is I'm applying this paint very thinly. So I've added a lot of medium to the paint and then I'm applying it very broadly and thinly to that area of the painting. By applying the paint thinly at this stage, one, it helps me cover the area very quickly and also it allows me to work on top of this without having to worry about mixing the new layer with the layer underneath as this layer which is applied thinly will dry quickly. And it also helps me just get a good visual impression and that way I can see things a lot clearer whether I have to change anything with the drawing. I now mix a shadow value for the areas of the house that are in shadow. As the house is a white house, these shadows are picking up a lot of the reflected light from the sky, so they have a really nice blue, slightly purpley cast to them. Also, one thing to note is that as the shadows go further up the building or more angled towards the sky, they'll be bluer in hue. And if any of the shadows are slightly angling down or closer to the ground, they'll be a bit uh, yellower, a little bit warmer in hue as they're picking up reflected light from the ground or in some cases reflected light from the trees. To paint the area of the house in light, I'm using mostly titanium white. However, I have added a very small touch of my cadmium yellow, just a tiny hint, just to give this a slightly warmer appearance as it's getting lit by sunlight, which is slightly warm. And also I want to give a bit of that warm, cool contrast between the light and the shadows. So once I have all the big areas of the composition massed in, I'm then going in with some smaller brushes, picking out some of the subtler details within the shadows. And I can also refine areas of the contour and pick out some highlights or even shadow shapes within different areas of the painting. So one thing to look for when painting a scene which has a lot of foliage, so a lot of bushes and trees and leaves and grass, is to really try and look for variety within the greens. So what you don't want to do is paint all the greens as the same uh, color mix, the same hue, as this can make the painting look a bit dull. So you want to sort of look into the greens and see uh, whether it's a cool green, whether it's a warm green, is it closer to blue, is it closer to yellow? And personally, I often like to push this a little bit just to push the green 
slightly closer to blue or slightly closer to yellow just to give a bit of variety uh, to the different greens within the painting and this adds a lot more vibrancy to the painting without having to paint in uh, sort of pure saturation and uh, make it look like the grass is sort of toxic waste so just by pushing these subtle shifts of warm and cool you can create a very vibrant and colorful effect to your painting So I hope you enjoyed that video of me painting La Paria Alta here in Andalusia. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram to keep up with my artwork at George Frederick Thomas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.